everybody. Um, I'm going to ask, it's unusual, I've got my lovely wife here this evening. Uh, I'm going to ask her to lead us in the pledge. Uh, I, pledge I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States, States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing. Heavenly Father, bless this assemblage. Grant us the wisdom to make our every decision fair-minded and in the best interest for all its residents. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you very much, everybody, for coming tonight. I was telling Professor Tobin earlier this evening that this is my favorite meeting of the year. This is the fourth time that we've received the Tools for Change uh, students. And in talking with them today, I understand this has been one of the, the best projects they've had in all four years. Um, so what I want to do is uh, move right into the fun part of our program. And Professor Tobin, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Joe, and uh, thank you so much for allowing us to appear before you again this year. Um, I think that uh, there's two things I'm especially proud of this year, uh, and one is that uh, the town had helped us in the past couple years, and we were able to work with you in a different way, uh, and I'm really proud of the fact that the public-private investment that you made in the program has kind of bore fruit this year where we're standing up on our feet and we're uh, working on our own but also creating different kinds of synergies with you and so I wanted to, to note that and, and say how proud of, of, uh, I am of the, the program and the students. And the second thing I wanted to mention was that uh, what this, this program that we did this year allowed the students to both engage in an issue with their minds, hearts, and bodies. And I think that, that that's, I'm, I'm really excited about that because uh, the issue of hunger that, that we want to talk about today, which are just kind of branching into as outsiders, uh, many of the students volunteer, but the program offered the opportunity to think about the issue from an analytical perspective. And I think that mind, heart, and body is a really nice way uh, for uh, all of us to kind of be engaged. And the final thing is each year I learned something, and I just want to take one minute to tell you what I learned this year. What I learned was the value of messiness, the value of messiness. So the morning before our focus group, we're sitting around, and what we realized that the composition of the focus group was different than we had planned. And so we had to come up with some different focus group prompts. And I said to the students, I said, I wish I had an answer or I could point to a piece of paper or a book or an internet site where the answer to this was, but I can't. And we've got to, in the few minutes we have, let's pull together new prompts that are appropriate. And as I was sitting in the focus group, uh, a focus group which was entirely run by the students, I said no, nothing at all. I was like, that's good for them. And you know what I, said to, what I said to myself, and I didn't say to them, was I have two Duke students this year, two seniors, who are terrific people, great women, smart, thoughtful, interesting, great SAT scores, great APA, A, AP results. They were doing an honors seminar this year, which we do for the best of our best students, did work in the first semester. We're, f we're writing and collecting data in the second semester, and had a series of data problems. One had not followed through with a relationship with a community partner that was providing the data, and both of them dropped the honor seminar. Dropped the honor seminar. And the honor seminar is what the best thing we want the students to do. Academic citizenship isn't going to class, isn't what we want them to do. We want them to do something special. And here's the point. They couldn't do it. They were great people, but they couldn't do this high degree of difficulty thing. And what it made me realize as a parent, I have three children, is that the challenge of finding places where the, the young people can take on an open-ended problem, deal with the messiness of dealing with students from different backgrounds or different places, with answers that don't have, with questions that don't have right answers. And I'm so appreciative of the community for supporting this little effort to try to give 
myself and the students that practice at dealing with the messiness. And I finally want to conclude by saying you uh, had a confidence in the program from the beginning. You supported us from the beginning. And I, you know, and I think those are, it's hard to quantify that. The admissions director at Duke doesn't know how to, to measure that. But it's terribly important, and we know it's important. And so I want to end by just thanking you for having the confidence uh, to support the program uh, and to support that vision. Um, I want to turn it over to the students, but I want to thank a couple people first. I want to thank the principals. Mitchell Combs is here from Fort Chester. Thank you so much, Mitchell, for coming. Um, I want to thank Debbie Reisner, who's been incredibly helpful on a whole host of strategic issues and questions. I want to thank Sherry Zaccaro, who is on a bus to Tennessee. Uh, uh, and then I want to thank my partner in crime, uh, Dr. Valerie Fite. I want to just hand it off to the students now and uh, take it away. Hello and good evening. My name is Sam Zarkauer and I am a sophomore. And flexibility is a major asset that we've had during this study. Since especially we had a very limited degree of knowledge in regards to the subject. And after collecting a great deal of data and then analyzing it, we were shocked by the sheer magnitude of the issue. On every level, in all aspects of the community, and in every sector and in every village, this issue impacted it. Hunger is not just one area. It doesn't affect one particular, particular group, but everyone. Oh, wow. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Okay. As I said, flexibility is key. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to switch out? Yes. Okay. Hi, my name is Annabelle Gutterman. Um, we were actually presented with all of this information about hunger through Dave Thomas, who's acted as a liaison for the town of Rye for the past four years and has been very involved in Tools for Change. And he actually shared with us the overwhelming amount of data of hunger in this area. And he placed this huge emphasis on the locality of the issue. And many people think of Rye as this affluent town and that hunger wouldn't be something that would affect us. But we have the have and have nots, and that was something that you shared with us that was really important. We saw hunger as this big, complex issue. And it was important to note that because you see hunger as something that is very overwhelming, but what we did was we took it apart into something that we felt we could make a meaningful contribution towards, which was really important in pursuing this project. Since, as I may reiterate, it is affecting many different groups of people throughout the area, and the sooner we solve this crisis, the better. Hi, I'm Rachel Novick. So, we're looking at a very complex problem here, and it had many questions, but we found the common emerging question to be how we as young researchers could assist the organizations within our community to more efficiently fight the hunger. So that brought us to our final research question, which was, in what ways might we help community organizations work together? So with our question, we began, oh, by the way, I'm Hunter Greenhill, I'm a freshman. So with our research question determined, we began our research and we came across two statistics that were quite shocking. First of all, we found that 
of um, the American population is what we call food insecure, which basically they are unsure as to where their next meal will come from. So in real people's terms, this equates to about 35 million people, which was rather heart-wrenching. Um, furthermore, we found that 10% of children in America live in a food insecure household. So just to put, so with that in perspective, we moved on, and uh, we found that food insecurity is tied to the following factors of uh, income, gender, age, and education. And through a study done by Dave Thomas and uh, Greg Arcaro, we also found that their study proved the correlation of these four factors with food insecurity, but more importantly, that they were closely related with Westchester County and therefore could be applied to our research. And. Oh, and also we would like to acknowledge that there are federal organizations, organizations such as SNAP. However, for the purposes of our research, we chose to focus on streamlining interaction between local organizations. Hi, my name is Sam Lawhon. I'm a junior. Okay, so for our research, we conducted a focus group. And our participants were a nutritionist in private practice, two community organization leaders, one of whom does community outreach, the other food distribution, and a representative of the town who's been working closely on the issue. We found the results of this focus group to be very surprising. Participants consistently characterized the inaction of specific town residents as uh, twofold. On one level, citizens are simply apathetic about the issue. That is to say that they understand its prevalence and yet choose not to act. However, on another, perhaps more universal level, citizens simply aren't adequately informed about the scope and scale of the problem in our community. In addition, participants described organizational challenges that result from a lack of communication using the example of one organization missing a pickup from a, uh, a store like, say, Costco, and then all of that food going to waste because another organization wouldn't be informed of that food being uh, available to pick up. Okay, so ultimately the goal of this project is to generate policy recommendations that we can make to the town of Rye that we feel will help to improve upon the issue again, uh, that we're examining, in this case hunger. So the, basically the first thing that we came up with is that as students and we hope as uh, constituents of the town will want to be involved, meaning that we'll have people actually have volunteers on the ground, people be involved, you know, working in soup kitchens or food pantries or helping to deliver food to different locations, get people actually involved actively on the ground in the fight against hunger. Secondly was our idea to do what we're calling a lunch for leaders of, uh, of people in the fight against hunger and try to facilitate greater communication between them. So our plan was to do a bi-monthly program in which we would get leaders of various organizations in the community all uh, aimed at fighting hunger and get them to, to sit down and generate an ongoing discussion and a communication between them so that they can both bounce ideas off each other but also maybe find someone who can help out when say they are unable to run a certain event or they're running low on food and then another organization can help them out and just facilitate that communication so that the organizations who are actually fighting this, uh, fighting this battle can can uh, better serve the hungry in our community. And thirdly, again, in an attempt to facilitate communication, we wanted to do a system of electronic alerts between the different organizations fighting hunger. So you would have, let's say, one group is supposed to get a donation from Trader Joe's and deliver that to a food, food pantry and they can't make it. So they can send out an alert, say, hey, you know, we've got this delivery. Get another organization can go pick it up. So that way, we're not putting any food to waste. We're doing as much as we can and making sure we're as efficient as possible in uh, helping to serve the needs of the hungry in our community. And this is sort of our, our way that we think both the, the both governmentally and economically we can get people in the town all sort of working together and to facilitate the greater communication that will allow these organizations to best serve those who, who most need our help. All right, so I'm Arthur, and now we'll take any questions that you may have. Well, yeah. I just oh. want to know if you're aware that we have churches who have food pantries and closed pantries and also uh, every um, different times of the week. And um, we have Reverend Rachel Alger here who St. Peter's does a wonderful job 
and uh, they give us food on Sundays, Mondays, Thursdays. I mean, it's wonderful what they do, okay? Right. And we have um, also St. Francis uh, Iglesia. They give us food on a Wednesday and a Holy Rosary, Don Bosco. My God, the food pantry, the clothes pantry, lunch. I mean, they have food all the time. And if we have to, if we have to, there are other uh, churches and other um, uh, communities that do that kind of work also. I only know about Port Church because I'm a historian for the area. And um, I can tell you right now that we have a lot of you guys helping helping from the village of Porchester, Rye Brook, I mean, you know, all over the place. So thank you for everything you do. And thank God you are learning the right thing. That as we get older, nobody wants us. There's age discrimination, okay? So a lot of people are struggling right now because they've lost their jobs, they're disabled, they're veterans. They're seniors, and they can't do very much. So thank God for the younger generation that helps the older generation to survive. Well, thank, thank you very, you very much. much. Other questions? Other questions? Uh, Arthur, a uh, couple, couple things I'd like to have you touch on. Uh, one, did you uh, discuss uh, the subsidized or the free uh, free meals in the uh, in the schools? Uh, the other thing is um, the ability for people that may may be able to receive food, but not uh, they don't have the ability to prepare it uh, in their own uh, in their own um, apartment or, or residence. And um, and then I think the. I uh, had, had one more, but add, act to those two, and then I'll, I'll get to number three. I forgot well, the well, Luke, uh, one of the things we actually looked at a lot was the federally and state subsidized lunch programs for students. And the one thing that we found, which a lot of people don't necessarily think about, is those programs are fantastic. They work great during the school week. Where do they get food on the weekends? Where do they get food in the summer? Where do they get food on holidays? And so our goal is to sort of say, where can we facilitate the communication between organizations so that we can assist, we can continually subsidize their meals. You know, the, the school programs are highly effective and many, many are run very well, but there's still so much time where those students still aren't getting food. So for us, it was a, a big way to see where can we get the organizations that are not affiliated with the schools to sort of step in and augment the, uh, the food supply to those students when they're not in school. And what about the, the have we discussed the, uh, the inability for people to prepare food once they have it? I mean, well, you want to go? Go, go for it. Well, what do, you, what do you mean by that? Well, one thing, and we, we discussed this here uh, in the town. Uh, well, I discussed it one time uh, here. We, you know, the holidays come, and everybody wants to donate, uh, you know, a ham or a turkey to a family that may need, that may need uh, you know, food. And uh, it's easy to go to a store and pick up a ham or a turkey and give it to someone, uh, but only to find out that they, <coughs> they don't have the means to prepare that, that meal. Uh, and then, you know, it's, uh, it's you're almost adding insult to injury. Uh, so that's a, a question that I think, uh, it's a good question for you guys to ponder. Um, in the later stages of our study, we did touch upon that issue, and we discussed multiple ways of improving, such as having more programs to teach students. Hold on, hold on, let's leave that one second. No. Go ahead. <laughs> We've thought about implementing other programs that could teach people on how to prepare meals more effectively or at all in healthier manners or at the very least cheaper manner so that they can continue to provide food for their families. So we took that into account in the later stages. Thank that you. something that we were hoping to, again, be something that we would facilitate when we get the different organizations talking together, say, well, you know, providing food is not enough. So when you go to a food pantry, they don't just hand you some food. They tell you, Here's this, you know. Do this with it. Don't cook it with that. You know. So right. get get people to not only have the, the resources they need, but actually be able to utilize them is something that we think the uh, the local organization would do a good job. Of exactly right. It and goes back to uh, you know, it's better to teach somebody how to fish than to give them a fish, exactly. right? Exactly. Uh, and then the last uh, item is that, and I I, I specifically appreciate you uh, dialing in on the 
the opportunity, uh, well, the, the non-opportunity for the organizations to communicate. And uh, that has to be huge. I mean, and, and I don't know what the value is of the food, let's just say, that was lost to Costco uh, that could have went to people, or, you know, how many hundreds of pounds uh, of food that could have uh, went to the right people if you had that clearinghouse, if you had the ability to communicate better. Uh, so I would say that that's probably the first and foremost thing that, uh, you, that can change immediately in the town of Rye is better communication uh, between those organizations. So I want to thank you. You guys have never let us down over the past four years, and we don't uh, expect you to uh, do that anytime soon. So thank you. I think we have some more questions. Yeah, let's give a round of applause. Questions. Some other questions? I think I would like to comment something that they mentioned. Uh, Father Hilario, I think, we're, Tom, where, where should Father Hilario get so you can see him? Right, okay. One of the things thing that, yes, we find we, out we is that, that uh, they cannot cook food. And <clears throat> most of the time, if we have 100 people, we have to have 200 plates because they have what we call to go. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Uh, now, one other thing that you mentioned, and I think it's critical, and I think that you should not look at us, look at the government, is that we need that connection among us that give food. But yeah, because sometimes I have too many things, and who I call, it's a process. But we need to have that connection that we could go to a central park and say, look, they gave me 200 corn. Who need corn because I have too many? Or I have too many bread. And sometimes I have to call somebody from a Maronek to go and get bread because I have too many bread. So I think that that issue of connection among we that give food would be very critical to make us be more efficient. Uh, the only thing I would commend you is that we have a group from Brook that come here, school from Brook that come here and give food. So if a Jew would like to work with us, we would be more than pleased to work with you. Absolutely. We all love Thank you. Other questions, Debbie? Uh, first of all, I want to commend your team. Debbie, um, I just stand up so we can get started. Incredible. I'm, I'm really impressed with the work that you did, and um, I'm finding it, it is uh, very thought-provoking. So I'd like to know, now that you've dipped your toe into what's clearly a very huge and complex issue, where do you think your research might go in the future? We believe that our research will help facilitate greater change and to help promote a possible solution and to continue helping to solve this problem. We believe that our research will be greatly beneficial and we are planning for during the meeting to possibly facilitate this change in communication. And one major um, issue that we talked about was communication and we believe that if we work at these meetings and continue to have them, the different groups will talk eventually and they will communicate their issues and their needs and possibly a centralized group or coalition to move all those supplies. We're just not able to currently, we're planning to. I think as well it would be interesting to investigate different aspects of um, the whole, you know, groups of organizations, so it would be interesting to try and talk to representatives from perhaps uh, Costco or any of these big stores and figure out if there's anything from their end that they see could, uh, you know, obviously improve efficient, uh, efficiency or something like that. There's a lot of things that we can investigate about the issue, um, but given, you know, our limited time, I mean, we just wanted to kind of zero in on this one thing of communication which we had uh, available to research. So in the future, what we could do is we could work to make sure changes in communication are implemented so food is doled out to the right people, the right amount, with greater efficiency. But also what we could do is, with the more time that we would have, we could also get more data from like on the ground, like working and volunteering inside the food pantries to see what it's really like. 
and from there we can probably structure a plan that's tailored more to the specific needs of the people we're serving. And also we could probably design a program to make people more aware that this is a pressing issue. And with that and with awareness will come more aid coming to the people who need it. So that's another interesting area that we really want to pursue. We have a great deal of um, potential. And we are planning to work on that and to make it realized and see actual results in the future. It's just we first need to facilitate the meetings to get everyone in the same room talking. Other questions? Well, uh, I'd like to. Um, any, any other questions? Yeah, we're good. Uh, I just like to. Every year, um, I say this. I said I. I can't wait uh, till we celebrate the 30th anniversary of what we uh, call the Tobin Project, and I hope by then you guys will have uh, made a big dent in terms of solving this problem. Uh, you know, Nelson Mandela passed away this year, and he gave a famous speech in Trafalgar Square in uh, London in 2005. If you remember, if you're not, you can Google it. And basically, it was a make poverty history speech. Yeah. Uh, and I think your generation has an extraordinary opportunity that you really can make poverty history. And he encouraged you to become that great generation that does that. Well, Professor Tobin, thank you for launching this great generation. And I very hopefully you can So I think with that, we'll bring this to a close. We'll give people a chance to uh, exit, maybe take a minute, a uh, half-minute break, and uh, we'll pick up the, the normal meeting. Photo up. Oh, photo up. Yeah, even better. Yeah. With town board, why don't we come down to the town board? And actually, I want to, Professor Tobin, it was, uh, this program was safe sustaining this year, so I want to thank you for coming here in the town. The town board, should we get here with the, the kids? Hope, come on. Town clerk, best Dave, Dave, Dave Thomas. Dave, can you shut that door, please? Yes, I Thanks. just. Oh, oh yes, yeah, <laughs> Can I get a. Um, we, we call the roll, Bishop, and bring the meeting to order? Oh, sorry, hold oh, 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 oh. I'm still right down Park, man. 2014 is now called to order. Collins? Aye. Nardi? Aye. Nioris? Aye. Villanova? Yes. Harvard? Yes. Okay, does anybody have any comments on the minutes from April 15, 2014? If not, can I get a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second? Yes, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Goldie, comments from the public? What about the internship program? Go on. What about it? That's the lead. Okay. Um, Mr. Heber, I'd like to speak, but I don't, I don't know. Yeah. That's right. <clears throat> uh, sorry, comments from the public? Mr. He said comments from the public. Oh, okay. He did. He okay. Did. He did. Um, I'm glad you listened to those kids because that's incredible. Um, we have a lot of people in the village of Rochester that have lost their jobs, that are that are struggling, and a lot of stores are starting to close, and. Um, and there are big problems uh, with the disabled, the, the veterans, and the seniors. And um, I'm hoping that they can help us. They can help us. Uh, Reverend Horatio, he helps us. And he was here, thank yep. God. Yep. Uh, but the others were not. Um, I'm sorry, the police, the firemen, public works, and um, EMTs are our saviors. Uh, they help us all the time when we need help. And I was in shock that a lot of people did not attend the police and firemen's uh, memorial mass that we had at Our Lady of Mercy Sunday at 8 a.m. and then went on to the breakfast at the Porchester Senior Center. I was in shock that...
A lot of people in government did not come to any of those meetings. Um, uh, it's very important to help the citizen and taxpayer of the community. And if you don't do that, then I'm sorry, there is a big problem. Uh, when you run again for election, who knows whether you will. Today is voting day on the uh, Porchester Reunion Free School District budget and there are two uh, people that are running for re-election. I don't know how many people came out to vote. I put my voting button on to make sure that they at least see it and let's go out and vote, okay? So I don't know whether they did or they didn't. Um, I only look forward to you, Rye Town, because Rye Town should stay alive. It should stay alive. I'm in shock that this building has been sold. I'm in shock that you are coming to 222 Grace Church Street. I don't know where you're going to put everybody. I mean, there's so many organizations and things going on in this in this building that I don't know how we're going to do it at 222 Grace Church Street. So, whatever you can do, please do. And help the people. Help the citizen and taxpayer by getting the taxes down. I know you have your lack money all over the place. Our Lady of Mercy said they're closing because they don't have enough money. And somebody else told me Sacred Heart is closing. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This country was founded on freedom of religion. Our First Amendment Bill of Rights. Freedom of religion. Come on, we need our religious community. We don't need a lot of other um, things, but we need our religions. In the United States of America, that's the way we were founded, on freedom of religion. So we have to get together and get to the cardinals and wherever and tell them, stop it, stop it, stop it. And maybe the, the churches can get rid of some people that they don't need there. And if they went on the historic register of historic places, New York State and Federal, maybe they could get some money that they need. I don't know. I can't do it by myself. I'm only one person, one vote. I need help. So come out, government, and help the people. Thank you, Goldie. Now, uh, today's a special day. Uh, because uh, Goldie allowed me to tell, uh, yesterday was her birthday. And Goldie was uh, 88, 88, you should allow me to tell her age, 88 years young yesterday. And so uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again. If everybody in our community was committed and participated as much as you did, we'd be the number one community in all of America. So Goldie, thanks for... I think we should sing happy birthday for Goldie. You ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Goldie. Happy birthday to you. Okay, other comments from the public? Please, yep. Yep, please. No, 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 Mr. Huber, yeah, please. You're on. You're on, you're on. No, no. No, no, no. Hold on, Mr. Hubert. Hold on. I know you're anxious. You'll get there. You'll get your chance. Happy birthday, Goldie. Uh, I'm good. Hello, everybody. My name is Hope Klein, and I am the Independence Day uh, Port Chester, Town of Rye, Rye Brook, Independence Day Committee Chairman, taking over for uh, Honorable Jerry Logan and his wife Nancy, and they've been very assistful. I'm sorry that I was not here prior to this evening's meeting, but I still have five and a half weeks. And so I'm here again in our 67th consecutive year to request that the Town of Rye um, try very hard in a very difficult year with a lot of snow and over budgets if we could request um, $2,000 uh, towards the fireworks this year. Maybe I, I, uh, I saw Hope the other day and I explained to her that we contributed $1,500 in the previous last year, I think, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken, Bishop. Mm -hmm. And what I said to Hope, since this is her first year, and she said she would really appreciate if we could make a special effort to make her first year a success, I said I'd certainly put it before the board that we offer 2000 rather than $1,500. Uh, we'll take whatever we can get. Beggars yeah, can't be choosers. Absolutely. Nothing to do. Just something I've always been curious yes. about in general um, on several organizations. 
Do you request the same amounts from the village that you do from the, the villages that you do from the town of Rye? Uh, actually, I request more. From I request the I, villages. I, I do, and I, I also both. Um, Linda Torrentino represented us last night at the village of Portchester, mm -hmm. and the village of Rybrook was able to match last year's contribution. I, I, I did across the board this year ask for more because the uh, Grucci fireworks contract is more, yes, sure. and so I did ask for more, but um, we're trying to plan accordingly. So. Uh, just in general, all no, that's fantastic organizations that take care of our celebrations. I've always just been a little bit curious about the proportion. Obviously, our budget is significantly less than yes. the villages, so I was wondering about that's, if yes. the contributions were proportionate yes. in scale. The village of Rybrook gave us 3500 and I'm hoping well, for... No need to. Oh, well, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. public record. It's public know. record. Yeah, sure. I appeared on their TV show, too, so it's all good. It's all good. Uh, and, of course, we'll always do the same thing we've done, which is uh, go to the public, uh, and of course uh, go to some of the business owners. Yeah, and it's a, it's a great celebration. And Near Eyes has been uh, very generous, and uh, I've been promised that they will be generous again this year, which Good. takes a little weight off of my five foot three shoulders. <laughs> so, anyway, that was all I wanted to say. We're ready I'm to hold on. Any comments from the board? I'm um, on G. So. Are we are we prepared yeah. to authorize the uh, two thousand dollars, or do you want to stay at fifteen hundred? Well, I think we can we can probably go to the resolution and take it yeah. under. Uh, okay, perfect. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. All right, Hope, thank you so much for your comment. We'll, awesome. We'll thank get you. to it a little bit later. Yep. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Any other? Mr. Hubert, your turn. Uh, Mr. Supervisor, Town Board, Dick Hubert from uh, Terrell Greens and Rybrook. It's a hard act to follow these two wonderful acts, um, but I'm not here to ask for money tonight. I'm here to ask you to reconsider how you're apportioning your money, and most specifically, I want to talk about veterans groups as a veteran myself. Um, this, is, this coming weekend is Memorial Day weekend, and the lead effort uh, to remember the sacrifices of our men in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, is being led by organizations that you've never heard of, that have never appeared before this board to ask for anything. They're basically based on the internet. They are the Iraq and Afghan Veterans of America and Concerned Veterans of America, two of the most prominent, who have taken the lead in the ugly battle to clean up uh, the Veterans Administration's utterly abominable uh, treatment of our veterans in their hospitals, uh, an issue I'm sure you're all aware of. Um, we just had here in both Port Chester and Rybrook, in the uh, both villages, before the school boards, uh, a very important uh, initiative to help veterans, and that was a, a, a law that was passed by our governor and the uh, legislature, uh, signed by the governor, passed by the legislature, which came through this board, as you all well know, that authorized the school boards to um, give a veteran's benefit to those who had served uh, in the military on their school property taxes. And I'm sure you all know that that was carefully graded so that those who had served in combat, those who had been wounded, those who had really sacrificed, got more of a financial break than those uh, like myself who never got shot at but gave a couple of years to their country. Uh, the bottom line being that the thought was that um, uh, those who had sacrificed careers and financial advancement should get some kind of benefit from the country that they served. Now, there was not one single veterans organization in the town of Rye or in the Port Chester School District, to my knowledge, and for sure in the Blindbrook School District, who came to advocate for that. The American Legion was missing in action. Uh, if there was a Veterans of Foreign Wars chapter here, they were missing in action. Jewish war veterans, missing in action. The entire effort, uh, which was passed in Blindbrook and to my knowledge tabled in Portchester, uh, was led by citizen activists like myself and other members of the uh, military who were retired and felt that this was something that was owed the military. I think that the town ought to relook at the way it gives out money to veterans organizations by rote. I know there's nothing that allows you to give to an internet organization that's based in, in Manhattan that happens to serve the veterans of this country and argue on their behalf, the veterans of Iraq and Afghanistan. But I think the American Legion has pretty much seen its day. Uh, the only thing the American Legion has done 
recently was to call for the resignation of Secretary, uh, Veteran Secretary Shinseki, uh, and that was because some of their members were dying in uh, Arizona because they couldn't get into the hospital. Needless to say, hundreds of, of uh, veterans of Iraq and Afghanistan have had the same fate, but only the uh, IAVA, the Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, have called out for help. So I would like you to rethink how you uh, uh, treat veterans organizations in the town of Rye, and I'd like you to make a statement. Should they get an automatic $1,500 every year at this time? Should there be some other use for that money uh, to note the uh, service that veterans have done? Uh, should there be contributions made to organizations that are not locally based? Uh, I think this whole issue deserves a thorough rehearing. I don't suggest you do it now, but I think it demands a thorough rehearing. It demands uh, attention from the media, and it demands the local veterans groups justify their existence for a change. Because too, for too long, they have been receiving money in a knee-jerk fashion and not serving the interests of their local veterans. I can testify to that. And they are not serving the interests of the veterans who have given so much in our wars since 9-11. Uh, so thank you for thinking of this. I'll be watching you, and I'll be willing to participate in the discussion, and I'll touch the third rail if nobody else will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Comments from the public tonight? Yes, very good. Um, okay, let's get right into it. Uh, Mr. Nowanek? I'm sorry. This is the, uh, the plant memorial the tree. tree. Yep. Oh, okay. Uh, it, it's rare that we get uh, a letter like this, but uh, this kind of falls outside of uh, the Friends of Crawford Park. Uh, it's a special request uh, of a, uh, a family in Rye Brook. Uh, the wife passed away, uh, and uh, her family took the remains to California, and the husband and child would like to uh, donate a tree for Crawford Park, specifically in memory of his wife. Uh, as you see, he's talking about a cherry tree and, and a, a tasteful plaque. We do have uh, three or four trees uh, specifically in Crawford Park that have been donated like this in, in like fashion. Uh, and uh, I told uh, them that I would put it before the board. Uh, Any comments from the board? Do, do we have a place where this, uh, this tree is looking to be planted? Uh, no, no, there's no specific place, although the gentleman, uh, when I spoke with him, we would work out a mutually agreeable place. It would have to be agreeable to the friends of Crawford Park, myself, as well as himself. And then uh, what, uh, what kind of a maintenance program do we need for, this seems to be like a species tree, right? Uh, if you recall, uh, along the roadway, uh, as you get down toward the Lincoln Avenue side, we have about, no, we have about a dozen and a half, I don't know, 15 or so cherry trees okay. uh, that line both sides of the roadway uh, at, at, to down to the lower half. It's possible we could replace one of those. You'll see that a couple of them could use uh, a bit of help. So that would be a perfect way of, of A, solving one of our problems, and B, solving uh, his problem as well. Understood. I support this. Can I ask I a question? Please, yeah, sure. I hate to sound like a lawyer, but um, the... Do we have a policy on this? Because you know, my concern is, one, if we establish this precedent, then pretty much anybody who wants to donate a tree and put in a plaque. I don't think the issue is donating the tree, but he mentions a plaque. And um, I don't know to, to what extent is the plaque going to be on the tree? And we have, do we regulate the size of the plaque? And, you know, I, I think you're setting a precedent here, and then you could have 100 people who say, I want to... Plant, you know, donate a tree, which I think we'd accept, but they also want to put in a plaque, and then you could have almost a, you know, a quasi-cemetery look down there with right. a lot of plaques and trees. So I'm just curious if there's any, did you get any information hey, no, we, as to the size of the plaque and if it's going to be on the tree or it's going to be on the, on the ground next to the tree? Our comment was uh, uh, to do something very similar to the trees that are there already, the dedicated trees that are there. Uh, and uh, they have a plaque that's approximately 6 inches by 12 inches. Uh, you know, and as uh, Commissioner Villanova might say, you know, similar to like a footstone. No, much smaller. 
much smaller even. Yeah. Um, and we have three trees that are just like that uh, as you approach the mansion on the right-hand side. Um, I agree with you that perhaps that could be discussed. I'm not even sure that they're wedded to a plaque. I think they want a place that they know in their hearts they can go there and no, I think the know, tree's fine. think of their I think anybody, we would welcome the donation of trees, right. I assume, for any reason or purpose. I think I don't have any issue. Yeah. I just think it's, it's an excellent I point. I was just wondering if, because what if they put in a giant headstone you know, and, and dedicating no, the tree. Would it, it would not. It would so, not. Be, it would uh, not yeah. be allowed. Okay. So uh, I just need to make sure that they understand that there are limitations on the size of the plaque, so it doesn't. It doesn't sure. detract from the overall nature of the. Plaque. Absolutely, and and it also it can't present a maintenance problem to us as well, right? Because right, we have to get our equipment to to be able to mow the lawns and, right. and do those kinds of things. Good. Can I get so we'll motion to any other questions for uh, Bishop. I have a comment that's not really that's an offshoot of this particular issue. Um, several months ago, we I was at a um, Frytown Park Commission meeting, and um, a member of the public had spoke to the fact that maybe there was something we could do to help improve the park that was along the lines of donations for specific things, and there could be a standard type of plaque like this bench was donated by so-and-so to help improve the park, but also create a donation line and the public could start to influence some, some much needed change on some basic items. And, you know, maybe it is time to look at a standard thing and talk to um, a, a plaque service or a monument service where we have a standard one so we could start to get donations and things like this from people, whether it's in memoriam or not but they'd have to use this particular one so that we have consistency throughout our parks. It's an excellent idea. Yeah. And, and I think the friends of Rytown Park do that very, very well. Uh, I think it's a wonderful suggestion. Would you make sure that gets coordinated with the friends of Rytown Park? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yep, friends of Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, not to interrupt you, um, Supervisor, but Dave Thomas has um, a presentation for the internship program. Perfect. Please. Mm -hmm. Okay, just uh, Wait, do you want to vote on this? Yeah. Yes, can uh, I get yes. a, a well, this motion? Section, sorry, this was a discussion, not a resolution, yeah. so oh, you don't okay. need to vote. Okay. Okay, okay sorry. Uh, Mr. Thomas? Sure. Okay, I'm out of your way here. Thank you. Move out of my way. Hi, <laughs> yeah. right, Dave Thomas, uh, Portchester, New York. Um, I'd like to discuss the internship program. I won't take up a lot of your time. Um, for the past two years, the town of Rye sponsored an internship program with local organizations in the community. We've had 18 kids go through the internship program. Eight of them have gone on to colleges. Uh, SUNY Purchase, Concordia, Westchester Community College, Baruch, uh, State University of Cortland, Eugene Lang, um, College of Westchester, Northeastern University. So that's eight of those 18. Ten are still in, are still in high school and five are actively working at jobs, either full or part-time. So the program is working. Uh, one of the things we tried to do was to get the organizations to pay half of the stipend, uh, which is uh, $6. We pay the students $6 an hour for a 15-hour work week. Uh, we put that to the organizations. Unfortunately, only two came back and said they could do that of the, of the six or eight that we usually contact. But they also said that it's not in our budget this year, but if we plan, and one of the things we w I'm asking to do is to draft a letter to these organizations saying, for next year, please put this in your budget. If you need our guidance and how much it's going to, uh, how much you should apportion, please let us know so that next year we can reduce the course even further of the internship program. Um, every year, Greg Arcaro and I have tried to bring down the cost of this program and um, we've been successful. The benefits, the kids, uh, uh, you've seen some of them here tonight. Brian Kerr is from our internship program. Elizabeth Vast Verastro, who's been in a pa paper recently, she, uh, I can't remember what she did. But a lot of our, <laughs> she's always in the paper. She's always the front, in the paper. Front portion of the paper. There you go, yes. So, uh, and that's, that's one of the things. We want to keep these kids in the front portion of the paper, as it were. So I'm asking that the town continue to fund the uh, internship program at its present level this year, and then next year we're going to bring it down so that the organizations pay for half. Uh, the next thing I'd like to remind everyone, this Saturday, the African American Cemetery has its Memorial Day celebration. 
We have new signage um, donated by a uh, local Girl Scout who's working on her Silver Star project. Uh, it's a beautiful sign. We hope you can all come out. It's 10 a.m. at the uh, African American Cemetery adjacent to the Greenwood Union Cemetery in Rye. So uh, that's it. I just want to say about the, the Tools Kid every year. It's just inspiring to me personally, and uh, I hope we can continue to at least support them. You know, we're gonna we're gonna keep that that whole thing to um, uh, out of the town's budget because now we have funding and we're we're sort of geared up to get this uh, fund privately funded. Well, I got to say, uh, first of all, David, thanks for all your hard work. Second of all, I want to yeah. Second of all, I want to encourage everybody to go to the African American Cemetery on Saturday. In fact, um, I had a friend visiting from California, former mayor of Flint, Michigan, uh, and I said, do you want to go out on the boat? He said, no, I'd rather see this African American Cemetery Dave's talking about. And he went with Roz, my daughter, and they had a, Dave gave him a personal tour. So uh, if you show up Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, you'll see an, a wonderful opportunity. To, uh, Dave's invested tremendous time and effort to refurbish the cemetery. It's a real historic gem sitting right in our midst, and I think yeah. that um, uh, you, you, I encourage everybody to go. Uh, the second thing David just mentioned in terms of, uh, well, again, thanks for the work with the internship program. Again, it's the same kind of community outreach we're trying to do, uh, you know, with the tools program. The interns also give them job experience with not-for-profits helping our community. And finally, tools for change this year. So you just saw the presentation. I was really thrilled that Professor Tobin came and had the kids come present here. You know, we didn't contribute a penny to the program this year. Not a penny. And it was his way of saying thank you for all the support of the previous years and getting us launched and making it real. So, David, thanks for all your hard work. Greg, thanks for all your hard work with our, our model American community. I think next month we'll have a presentation, our own presentation on hunger and, and see how we can coordinate addressing that need as well, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you so much, David. You are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now, Bishop, sorry. Um. That's all right. <laughs> all right, next up is uh, B. Uh, the uh, Crawford Mansion interior painting. Uh, this is a project that, uh, frankly, we've been working on for better part of a year. Uh, Michelle Mendocino and... Uh, Councilman, uh, Councilwoman Collins uh, were the, the originators of this, uh, and um, what we did was uh, we have now uh, put a bid uh, out to paint the entire downstairs uh, of the mansion. Now, you know that it's very dark in, in uh, some areas. It's also uh, a totally different color and wall, co wall covering. Uh, in the library area, uh, people... Um, yeah, I, I mean, we, you've been, we've talked about this before, haven't right. we? Right. Yeah, I mean, I, basically we got four. Yeah, in the interest of time, when, de when Deputy Supervisor Villanova runs the meetings, they get finished in about 45 minutes. <laughs> when I, I run the meetings, they take an hour and a half. So okay. I think that, uh, I think we're pretty clear we're looking to spend $8,650. Right. There were four bids. Painting, right. four bids, and this is the lowest bid? This is the only. lowest bidder. Any questions from the board? I got a motion to approve the, the expenditure. So I got a second. Second. All in favor? Okay. Aye. Okay, great. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you, Bishop. Can you post it when yep. I can be of assistance? We, we would be glad to. I would, this, you, this is your local law, correct? Mm -hmm. or who's the yeah, we're, we're selecting a date for the public hearing. Right, right. right. Oh, okay. All right. We just want to briefly explain the local law because you got the next three items in any case. Oh, the local law. Mm -hmm. Right. Change the... Uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, sure. Uh, basically, the way it works. Um, good evening, everybody. I'm the assessor. Um, <laughs> sorry. sorry. Denise, our new assessor has done an absolutely fantastic job. Thank you. Um, the, the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's very rare for the assessor to get any applause. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. The local. The, the local law is to ch to change um, our ability to open the assessment role for STAR and enhanced STAR so that people applying can get that benefit in the same year. What's happening this year? Uh, if they've applied by May 1st of this year, they will not receive the benefit 
until next year. Yeah, the fifteen, the sixteen. Right. No, the fifteen, sixteen school right. taxes, as opposed to the current school yep. taxes, the fourteen, fifteen. And if we were able to open the roll now, they would get that benefit immediately. And most of the communities in Westchester have that right now, so um, it would be a good thing to change. Just want to make a comment. Uh, the the one of the reasons why this came up, uh, this legislation. Uh, we, there was uh, there was a resident from uh, the town of Rye that brought this to our attention. Uh, both uh, our assessor Denise uh, Knauer and uh, and uh, Paul Noto uh, were were did, were very re responsive to uh, to my concerns for this uh, resident. And uh, this is the perfect example of local government being responsive to this wasn't. This obviously affects all the residents, but this was one resident making making a phone call, and uh, come to find out, the town of Rye was acting in a, in a fashion that was somewhat antiquated, and not in keeping with the majority of, of the county. Uh, so this is uh, this was this is a very good law uh, that will benefit all of the town of Rye and makes us more responsive to the needs of our taxpayers. So I want to thank our assessor for being proactive. And, uh, and and challenging uh, you know everything to get this done. And uh, Paul Noto reached out to a couple of municipalities to find out what their legislation was. So um, again, thank you very much, and I urge everyone to support this resolution. So we're right now. Uh, thank you, Deputy Supervisor Villanova. So we're going to. Uh, so let's set a time. Be I guess June seventeenth at seven thirty. June seventeenth is that the next uh, yeah. board meeting at seven thirty? Perfect. Uh, hold on a second. Let's go. Uh, June seventeenth is Grievance Day. Do we have a, we have a conflict here? We have a an alternate plan. What's that plan? We're going to use the conference room right outside. You're going to use the conference room. Yes. A grievance day. Yeah. Okay. Outside of the outside of the assessment office on the second level. Okay, very good. So we're good to go. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, very good. Usually we go to Ryan Eck those days. We don't always. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 we need the last two grievance days, for example, you had about 10 people, 12 people show up in the evening. Right. Remember, they can, well, can we get a they can neck, all day. Can we get a ride neck meeting set up, though? Well, sure. you know what? Why don't we wait till after it, the move situation has happened, because we should maximize our time here. Okay, perfect. Well, anyway, the next meeting is June 17th, and it would be 7.30 for the public hearing. And it'll be here. Okay. Great. Okay. You need uh, a motion and a... Can I get a motion to approve the time for the Schedule public call? Schedule the public hearing. Schedule the so public hearing. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, I see, Denise, you want to hire some appraisers? Um, yes. The next three resolutions would be to hire Valuation Plus to do appraisals for some ongoing tax certs. Um, there's a good chance we are not going to need their uh, their services, but since the appraisal process takes uh, six weeks to initiate, um, we need to know that we we can move forward with this. Wonderful, and uh, we've already got uh, pricing for valuation plus correct. Yeah, it's that a standard approved. rate that they. Now, yeah. do we need to get these? I thought when we spoke on the phone yesterday, uh, uh, to this thing. Uh, Mr. Noto, that we didn't need to bring these for resolution approval. You generally, we don't. What, what we've done is in, the, in January, the assessor gives us the pricing schedule for the appraisers, and then um, the policy had been that you, supervisor, wanted to right. uh, make the final decision whether we actually retain the appraiser, uh, given the status of the litigation and, and the negotiations. So uh, Denise had gone ahead, and I guess she, this is maybe where you've done it in Peekskill or other places. So in any event, these are fine to do, um, but going forward, we don't absolutely need them because the board has already approved the pricing schedule. Okay, great. So do we need to approve it tonight then, or? Well, they're here. I think you should. Okay. Just, just Any questions on the uh, the three? Um, it would be D, three e and D, E, and F. D, E, and F. Can I get a motion to approve the hiring of three appraisers as per resolutions D, E, and F? So, so moved. moved. And a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Independence Day. Hope Klein's waiting uh, anxiously. Hey, what? I'm what? Learning are... all about, I'm learning all about the A and i I'm learning about all these other things. Do I stand up here while you vote? I don't know. What, what, so I guess we'll. You're a grand old flag. You're a. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, boy, I'm you have two hopes. You're you very more. lucky people. Hope yeah, and very lucky. Hope. <laughs> hope squared. All right. So, uh, any comments? So, hopes asked for two thousand um, dollars. What are our thoughts? What uh, what was our budget, uh, Bishop? Uh, I 
think we budgeted 1500 we budgeted 1500 But we've how much we budget for the model American community? I mean, we we have well, like 50. There's a lump sum in the right. model American community right. at the moment. I can't tell you where we are in, in right in that spending, but there is. But a there's lump so sum. there's right. So if we wanted to, we could do it. You know, sure. if we, 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 it, oh yeah, we can. You also have take take out a one, one yes. put it yeah. towards yeah. another. Yeah, seventy thousand. I would okay. say that's a good use of reallocating budgeted funds. Okay, and I am.